Love it or hate it, rear suspension is a work of art. The intricate system of pivots, bearings, and a shock work together to move the back wheel up and down, conforming the bike to the terrain and creating maximum traction and control, along with providing an extra level of support when sending jumps and drops to flat. However, take this away and you can still do all these same things on a hard tip. I put this to the test a couple weeks ago when a mechanical issue left me bikeless. Luckily, my friend Elliot was kind enough to lend me his hardtail and aluminum Santa Cruz Chameleon. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts, opinions, and experiences with this bike after riding my full suspension for a couple of months. So let's get started. Right away, I could tell that there was a lot less traction in the corners than I was used to, but I think that can be attributed to the tires, which are much less grippy than the ones on my enduro bike. Obviously, the trail was definitely a lot rougher without rear suspension to soak up the bumps, but this wasn't exactly a bad thing as this section of the trail, which is usually kind of boring, was actually a lot more fun and playful. Getting the follow cam on, Jack. I have to say that jumping this bike felt really good. The front suspension was more than enough to soak up the landings. Let's head back up for another lap. I didn't really notice it the first time down, but on the second lap, I definitely noticed the less amount of traction on the Rudy and Rough section coming into the step down, along with a harsher landing that did not give me the confidence to send it as deep as I normally would. However, that is almost always the case when using a new bike, and I think that my confidence will increase as I ride this bike more. Anyways, after that lap, I decided to get some clips of Jack and Ellen. It's raining! Alright, let's climb on out of here. Traffic jam. This is pretty obvious, but I thought I'd mention that without roof suspension, climbing was a lot easier because there was no travel to soak up the energy that I put into pedal. Dropping into this trail, one of my first impressions was that I had to pick my line much more carefully than on my big enduro bike. For me, this was actually a sort of a positive because I actually got to interact with this trail a little bit more and the overall geometry and amount of suspension actually made this bike very nimble. I felt like I could choose pretty much any line that I want. Please, I can't see nothing. However, this next sort of steep section is kind of where I was wishing for my enduro bike. That extra suspension along with the slacker geometry just made me feel more confident. Would an aggressive hardtail give me the same confidence as my enduro bike? Yeah, probably. Due to the lack of traction and reduced control I experienced, I personally gravitate toward my full suspension enduro bike for steeper and more technical trails like this. Later on, however, I ride a more traversy mellow trail and stick around for my opinions on that. That was just sketch.
On this more mellow section of trail, I definitely felt the benefits of the hardtail. I could pop off of side hits like these and natural gaps with much more ease than on my ethereal. A little over 20 meters. Hardtails climb like nothing else. After this quick climb and traverse, we get to our last trail of the day. No, <laughs> Next test for the hardtail is a traversing green trail called Emma McCarr. Dropping in, I was blown away immediately by the pop that the hardtail gave to this trail. It's really fun on a hardtail. I felt as though I could sprint, pump, and just do whatever I wanted without any of my energy being sucked by the back shot. For me, this turned this usually boring trail into a trail that's actually fun. This bike was also a rocket ship of the climbs. This climb that usually comes out of nowhere and is just really annoying actually wasn't even an issue at all. Jeez, there's power. This bike also cornered really well. Being light and nimble, you could kind of just whip it around the turn. So final thoughts on full suspension versus hardtail. Personally, I would gravitate towards my full suspension just because of the steeper and more technical terrain that I regularly ride. However, I did benefit from a hardtail many times today, including at the jumps, more traversy terrain, and the final flow trip. If your rides are on more mellow gradient, flowy, less technical, some traversing, climbing, that kind of terrain, then I would definitely consider buying a hardtail for your next bike. However, a full suspension would definitely benefit somebody that rides on more steep technical terrain and would like more control, traction, and better small bump compliance that would allow you to push your riding and ride more aggressive terrain with confidence. For my thoughts on two different kinds of bikes, I hope this video is helpful. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It really keeps me motivated to keep making videos. As always, thanks so much for watching and have a great Thanksgiving.